In today's video, I'm going to be giving you a four-step template on how to put together meals to reverse insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is at the root of a lot of health ailments we suffer with. Abdominal fat, skin tags, the majority of high blood pressure cases, these are all caused by insulin resistance. And as you're probably aware, these symptoms are very common, which signifies just how common insulin resistance is, although it often goes undiagnosed until it progresses to prediabetes or even type 2 diabetes. The good news is, is that insulin resistance is largely a condition of lifestyle. And what this means is that by making small changes to our daily habits, and especially to our diet, we can improve our insulin sensitivity and reverse insulin resistance. And we're going to go over exactly how to put together appropriate meals in today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kate. I'm a certified health and nutrition coach. I post videos twice a week here on YouTube talking all things insulin resistance, managing blood sugar, weight loss, improving your sleep, and more. So if you want to take control of your metabolic health, make sure to click that subscribe button. And you can also find me on TikTok and Instagram where I post every single day. Okay, so we're gonna get straight into the four-step template today. But first, I just quickly want to let you know that I released a new coaching program last week that centered all around reversing insulin resistance. This seven day insulin resistance masterclass gives you everything you need to know to reverse insulin resistance. And it also comes with a seven day sample meal plan. Plus you get access to a private Facebook group. So if you need a little bit more guidance and support getting started with insulin resistance, I'm going to put the link to check that coaching program out in the description box down below. But okay, let's get into the template. So step number one is to prioritize protein. If you eat enough protein to meet your needs, it's very difficult to overconsume in terms of energy. Out of the three macronutrients, protein, carbohydrates, and fat, protein is the most important. Protein builds our cells, and there's a certain amount we need to get in through diet every day. By prioritizing bioavailable protein at all of your meals, you take advantage of something known as the protein leverage hypothesis. This hypothesis states that we eat until our protein needs are met, regardless of energy content. So if we're eating foods that are just rich in carbohydrates, or foods that are just rich in fat, or foods that are rich in carbs and fat with little protein, it's very easy to eat too much and not feel full. I always like to use the example of either french fries or potato chips when I'm talking about this. Because how easy is it to eat these foods, just pick at them after a meal, even if you're not hungry? And this is because they are low in protein. So getting in at least 30 grams of protein at every meal is a really good rule of thumb. This will ensure that you're not hungry in between meals and you won't have that urge to snack because snacking can be counterproductive to insulin resistance. So you don't want to be having all these small meals and snacks throughout the day. Have two to three pretty big meals that meet your protein and your energy needs, and that's going to help with insulin resistance. Good protein sources to include are beef, chicken, pork, salmon, tinned fish in spring water, and also eggs. And if you're not big on tracking and counting how much protein you're having, which honestly I'm not, a good way to do it is through trial and error. If you're hungry after a meal, it's likely you didn't eat enough protein. So try increasing it next time. There is a lot more to lose from under consuming protein than there is to over consuming it. And like I said, <laughs> it's pretty hard to over consume. Step number two is to choose your cooking oil. So you want to choose the fat or oil that you're gonna cook with. Ghee, butter, tallow, lard, duck fat, and coconut oil are all good options. Olive and avocado oil are also good for lower temperature cooking. Avoid vegetable oils at all costs. So these are oils such as canola, sunflower, safflower, grapeseed oil, corn oil, soybean oil. All of these you want to avoid. They can actually contribute to insulin resistance. And I won't get too much into vegetable oils in today's video. I'm going to link a video up above if you want to know more. 
Number three, you want to add your fruits and your vegetables. Ideally, you want to choose low carb ones because carbohydrates are the macronutrient that requires the most insulin to process. And when we are working to reverse insulin resistance, we want to try to keep our insulin as low as possible because this gives our cells a chance to become more sensitive to insulin again. Examples of low carb fruits include avocados, olives, berries, and coconut meat. In terms of low carb vegetables, you can pretty much choose anything that's non-starchy. Broccoli, asparagus, mushrooms, cucumber, lettuce, and cauliflower are a few examples. Now, if you want to include some starchy vegetables, such as potato or squash, or even some tropical fruit, to be honest, that's probably fine. If you are focusing your meals around whole foods, which is what we've been doing so far, it's gonna be difficult to consume a large amount of carbohydrates. Unless you're eating like a crazy amount of potatoes or a crazy amount of bananas. But it's just something to consider that your insulin sensitivity might increase faster if your carbohydrates are kept to less than 100 grams per day. Now, depending on the dish you're making, you can add multiple of these fruits and vegetables, generally between one to three serves. Step number four is to add more fat. And this is important because we're keeping carbs to a minimum, so we need our energy to come from somewhere. And fat and carbs are two energy sources. So this could mean adding some extra olive oil to a salad or adding some butter to a steak. Avocados and olives are another great way to add some more fat to your meals. So when you put all four steps together, what does this look like? Here's an example. If your protein source was a steak, that's gonna be what you're prioritizing. And then the fat that you cook it in could be tallow, for example. As a side, you could do some steamed broccoli. And then the added fat could be some butter or some blue cheese on top. Or let's say you wanted to incorporate this template into a recipe. I like to use the example of butter chicken. Protein is obviously the chicken thigh and then maybe some bone broth in the sauce. You're gonna cook this in ghee and you could serve it with cauliflower rice as your vegetable. The additional fat would be the coconut milk that's added into the sauce. And of course, you can then add spices to your preference. So as you can see, this template can give you a wide range of meals. Eating for insulin resistance does not have to be boring. Now, before I wrap up, I just wanna remind you that if you are looking for a little bit more guidance and support getting started reversing insulin resistance, maybe you've just been diagnosed or maybe something's just clicked with you and you've realized that you do have a lot of the symptoms, I created my seven day insulin resistance masterclass to break down everything, make it super simple, have it all in one place. Like I said, it also comes with a seven day sample meal plan. It's a one-time payment and you get lifetime access to the program as well as the private Facebook group. So I'm gonna put the details in the description box down below. But anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, you might also enjoy my video on 50 foods that are good for keeping blood sugar stable, which are also good for insulin resistance. You can check that out here. If you wanna check out my most recent upload, you can find it here. And if you wanna check out my coaching programs, including my new insulin resistance masterclass, you can find those here. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.